Hey, welcome back to Blue Max 6. Thanks for joining. This is part two of a three-part series on the anatomy of a flight. In this part, we're going to be looking at cockpit pre-flight and programming of the Garmin G3000. In part one, we took a look at route planning, weather, FBO operations, weight and balance, and now all that information and the updated weather throughout the day is going to get programmed into the aircraft uh, and getting ready to fly. Part three, which will be out uh, shortly, is going to be flying the plane. So we planned, now we're programming the aircraft, and then we're getting ready to go fly the plane. So from battery start all the way through utilization of the electronic checklists, uh, programming the G3000, engine starts, all the way up to the point where I was getting my clearance, this is where you're going to see how that part of the, air, uh, at, that part of the uh, flight runs. Hopefully you all have some good questions and comments. You always do. So far, I've been able to get to all of those and I'll try to do that on this video as well. Thanks for joining. Hey, so I told you my philosophy of time passes, weather changes. Uh, for about 30 minutes after I shot that first forecast until now, it's been pouring down rain all day. So completely unforecasted. And uh, baseball game got canceled. So did a little bit of work. We're heading out to pre-flight in the rain. And then uh, we'll get out of here, get above the weather and the icing, and fly back to Richmond, Virginia. Okay. We are just hopping in. A very rainy, a little steamy. Uh, Miami, Florida. We pre flighted it in the rain. I decided to spare you and not capture too much of that. So welcome to part two of a uh, anatomy of Flying a jet. All right, so I've got power on. The first thing I do is I wait for the standby uh, instrument to count down to zero. You're going to get a lot of fan noise. So you turn the power on, you don't touch anything until that standby instrument counts down to zero. I am looking to make sure that all my Databases are up to date, and they are. Okay. Press the rightmost soft key to continue. And I get the synoptics page. Status. We're showing good. Okay, so the way the cockpit is laid out, everything is, so clean sheet design of the Honda Jet, everything is set up for specific areas. So if you look, You'll see AFCS servo power with a white box around it. Master alert with a white box around it. If you look down here, ice protection, trim, fuel, windshield heat, pneumatic. Across the entire aircraft, electrical, oxygen systems, ELT, landing gear. So it's all contained in the in logical areas, and that's how the checklist goes. So is the get a lot of questions too about using the checklist. It is electric checklist, electronic checklists that are part of the G3000 in here. You can see right now that I'm that I my normal checklist is up and I'm at before starting engine. So I just start running down that real quickly. I'll say them out loud. Um, but understand that the flow is I'm gonna start on the left side and it's gonna move me across and it's gonna move me down. I'm just gonna show you how we Program pre-flight and program uh, this side of the equation. So, batteries on, oxygen is on, checked and normal. Good, good. Electrical on and norm. ELT is normal. Nose wheel steering norm. Landing gear down. Alternate handling gear is in. Parking brake is set. Flaps are up. Thrust lever is cut off. Speed brake retracted. Ice protection was all uh, normal and off. Fuel panel is normal. Trim panel check set in norm. Windshield heat, norm. Pneumatic panel is normal. 
flare shield paintball is normal. Standby instrument is checked. Avionics initialization. Now I'm in the G3000, right? So I start with systems test. I hit the pre-flight button. First thing I'm going to get is fire detection test. It's going to show me fire. One, two, three, four, five, and audible. Right side. One, two, three, four, five, and an audible. Stall protection. It's our very subtle, subtle stick shaker. Switch illumination. I make sure all the switches are illuminated. I'm in daytime mode, so that's good. It's also checking to see if there's any electrical failures in the switches. So once that's done, it tells me status is ready to execute. So I'll go next. I can look at operating weight, payload, fuel. Fuel is interesting because I hit FOB sync and it tells me exactly how much fuel we have on the aircraft. 2,780 pounds. It tells me what, we're, what our takeoff weight is going to be and it's anticipating our landing right now. Here it wants to know where we're going. So what I do at this point, if you remember back in the uh, in, uh, first part of this series, I showed you how we plan. So I go back into four flight. I've got my four flight flight plan up. It tells me that it's talking to the G3000. So I send my flight plan to the panel, right? So I'm just gonna anticipate zero nine left. It goes to the panel, I get a message. Connect, flight plan received, activate standby, and okay. So now the flight plan is uploaded into the G3000. I may get some changes as we pick up our clearance, but that's what we have right now. So back to the initialization. It's got our flight plan, it knows our destination. So next. So I'm planning on taking off on runway 09 left. Tell me our takeoff weight. I calculated in the weight and balance, our center of gravity. So there's the weight and balance I did. I go to the summary, it shows me our takeoff weight and our CG percent of MAC, MAC is 31.1. So I put in 31.1. Weather, all right. More often than not, I can hit the load METAR data, but I don't, it's not illuminated right now. So it's not picking up the data signal based on where we are in the airfield. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just quickly, for the sake of uh, programming, I'll go to airport, Miami, Opelika, and I'll look at the METAR. So the runway surface, we know it's wet because it's raining, right? So uh, winds are 0, 060 0 at 3. Temperature is 18. And then barometric pressure is 3010. So I've manually put that in. I can send that, I can send that 3010 up to all my instruments. If I hit sync barrow, it'll send that up to uh, to all the instruments on. I'll look at the runway. I've got 8,002 feet available. Runway grading that's level. Uh, I'm going to be using takeoff approach flaps, no ice protection on this takeoff. Tells me to send my set my pitch trim to zero to 2.0. So there's 2.2, 2 2.1, 2.0. See 2.0. I've got I know my uh, my V1 is 104, my VR is 109. Uh, I'll need 4,660 feet at my weight. I'm getting a two knot headwind and a two knot left crosswind, and my pressure altitude to take off is negative 158 feet. So that's good. I'll accept the takeoff data. It's telling me single source because I'm not operating on both sides of the G3000. So back to initialization, accept initialization. So now the, the G3000 is programmed and initialized. So I'm back down to my checklist. Avionics initialization is complete. Passenger briefing, I don't have passengers. And Steve in the right seat is a, is a rated pilot. He's not type rated in the jet. Um, 
But for, for those of you who have questions about Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, he's your guy to talk to. Rudder, um, rudder pedals are adjusted. Our seats, safety belts are checked and set. Doors closed, cast messages out. Parking brake is set. Cast messages are just with the two engines shut down. I need 23.5 volts. I've got 24.4 and 24.3. That's it. Now into the engine start. Today is the 15th. It's an odd day. So I'm going to start with the odd engine or the number one engine. So I go to timer. I put 32 seconds in there because I'm not fast enough. I'm looking left at the engine, right and ahead, and it looks clear and clear over here. So looking with the, I, the left, it's illuminated to idle. That, in, that introduces this FADAC. Got a start light. I've got an M1 rise within 15 seconds. That's it. I've got N2, oil PSI, oil temp and fuel flow. We got starter dropout. We got a good start on number one. So now the generator is going to take over from the battery, and you'll start seeing the co pilot. EFT come out, co-pilot TTC coming out, and you'll hear the environmental system kick in to try to start cooling the cockpit down. So right now I'm watching these amps. I like to see the amps on the, uh, the engine that started um, get below 200. So I've got 32 seconds set. They're on the right. Start button, introduce FADAC. I've got a starter light. I've got an ignition light and a start. I've got M1 rise within 15 seconds. I've got N2 oil pressure and temp and fuel coming up. I've got starter dropout before 32 seconds. I've got a good start on number two. So back to the checklist engines. Engine instruments are in the green. Engine anti ice is required, it's not required. No external power. If I did, I'd give them the disconnect signal and look for the door to close. This is what I'm going to wipe out, wipe the, wipe out the flight controls. Move the control. The flight controls are free and correct. Wing anti not required. Avionics and flight data. Flap into the takeoff. I'm going to hit the toga button, which is on either side of the throttle. It's going to give me a takeoff setting here. This is a 15 degree uh, pitch up attitude. 3010 on the altimeter. 3010 here. Okay, set on both sides. Flaps are set for takeoff, speed brakes are tracking. Cabin signs are not required. This is where I would hit the systems control button, bring up interior lights, turn on fasten seatbelt and no smoking. That turns it on for the passenger seats in the uh, lab. Just control again. Parking brake. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and um, we'll pick up our clearance and we'll taxi and take off. So that's part two of this, which is how to set up the cockpit, how to program and, and run the checklist up till it's time to depart. So if you all have questions, shoot them out to us and we'd love to uh, answer them. If you have Microsoft Flight Simulator questions, I'll, give, I'll let Steve answer those because I don't know anything about it. Um, but uh, we appreciate hearing from you. Thanks.